Therefore, uh, Prof. Martin, why it is important for public to understand the science? I think it's important for several reasons. Right. Um, the first one is because it's interesting, and therefore they will enjoy understanding it. Right. But interesting is for you, but what about the, for the public? Well, uh, no, I think the public... Well, there are some things that the public are very interested in, okay. or everybody's interested in. Okay. What is the origin of the universe? Okay. Um, right. How long will people live? Right. Pe most people are very interested in animals okay. and natural history, so I think there's a lot of science that is very interesting. But the main reasons why I think it's important is because as the population of the world increases, we are being faced with a whole series of problems yeah. and the solutions to those problems are not obvious mm -hmm. and people really need to understand the, um, if not in detail, at least the arguments and the evidence right. for climate change, for um, ocean acidification, for the effects, possible effects of deforestation right. and they need to understand um, what the scientific evidence is right. and then to make sensible decisions, policy decisions. So it's important not just for the general public but right. for politicians, for policy makers to understand the um, <coughs> to understand what is um, the science behind the questions they're discussing. Right. And it is very easy in this time of internet and so on for people to put forward complete rubbish on every area. Yourself, you will know because you have been a doctor, that there has been a lot of um, rubbish that has been discussed about the effects of some right. um, vaccinations and people need to understand what the scientific evidence is right. and judge for themselves. Okay. And unfortunately many of these questions are not simple right. that politicians face, but they need to decide or people need to understand the scientific qu right. questions. They also need to understand some of the social context as well. Okay. But unfortunately, according to my, you know, notice and also my, you know, attention, many policy makers, yes. not only in developing countries, but also yes. developed yes. countries, when they are making, uh, when we are making a decision, yes. they are not based on the scientific things. Well, I think that that is true, but... Um, Sometimes I think that although the science is important, you have to consider the human effects of your decisions right. as well. But what is important is that politicians should understand the science so that they can make sensible decisions. Okay. Um, one of the problems is that some of the um, threats to society, such as the effect of population, the effect of climate change, are reasonably long term. Right. Climate change is not going to happen in the next five years, but it may in 50 years. Right. And the difficulty is that politicians work on a very short time scale, yeah. and they just want to be successful to the next election. Right. And therefore, if something is going to be a problem in 10 or 20 years time, it is not so serious as things that may be problems in one or two years' time. Right. But there are many issues where people need to be better informed. Right. And I think the important thing is that because science has become so broad and complicated, that nobody 
can know everything. So although I might be a chemist and a specialist in chemistry, when it comes to genetic modification of plants, say, I am a member of the public just like everybody else. Okay. The difference perhaps is that because I have been trained in science, I can understand what scientific evidence is and I can judge it better. Right. But I can't claim to know about everything. everything. Yes, sure. And um, I think an iPhone is quite a good example yes. because um, Lord Rees, who was one of the um, former presidents of the Royal Society, said he believes that there is nobody in the world who understands how an iPhone works. Oh. They, I mean, obviously each of the engineers understands a part of the iPhone, but right. it is so complicated that nobody understands everything okay. in detail how these things work. Right. And so a modern life is becoming far more complicated. Right. And so people at least need to have an appreciation of science. So I think according to your opinion, what are the aspects about science that you are working on? enjoy on working on the aspect of science? Well, I enjoy doing research and in quite, I think, an important area of chemistry, but it's not an enormously broad area. My area of chemistry is called green chemistry, green chemistry. which is trying to find cleaner ways of making or manufacturing chemicals. So why are you working on this and keeping on working this? Well, I'm working on this because I think, well, first of all, I think it's interesting. Right. I enjoy doing it. Okay. Uh, but I think it is very important because as the human population increases, the demand for chemicals is getting greater. And we have to be able to manufacture the chemicals more efficiently right. because the starting material, the resources, the petroleum say that um, we're making chemicals from is not expanding right. so we have to make more material from the same amount of starting material okay. which means we have to have less waste right and so I think this is a really important challenge and I think it's at the same time scientifically interesting okay so I mean I think if you ask chemists or most scientists, why they do science, it's because they enjoy doing it. But I hope that most people also say that they're doing it because they feel it is important for humanity. Right. So as a chemist, maybe you can also understand that many public misunderstanding about uh, chemistry. Yeah. So what are the most frequent misunderstanding of the public about chemistry? Well, I think the problem with chemistry, well, most people think very po positively about the word chemistry. Right. They don't think so positively about the word chemical. Mm. And in English, and I don't know what's in your language, the word chemical is often associated with words like toxic yes. or nasty or right. dangerous. Yes. But what most people don't realize is that everything is made out of chemicals. Oh, yeah. And the Royal Society of Chemistry offered a prize of a million pounds if you could produce something in your hand which did not contain atoms. All right which is quite impossible. Sure. And so I think the problem with chemistry is persuading the public that it is of great benefit to them. And this, this is not propaganda, but they are wearing synthetic uh, chemicals in their clothes. They are taking pharmaceutical products. They are using fertilizers. They are using plastics in their houses. So 
they, they're using the product of the chemical industry. And if we didn't have those products, the planet could not support a small fraction of the number of people that, they, that is um, supported at the moment. So I think it's really um, quite important that we explain the importance of chemistry to the general public. But I think you don't need every scientist to explain yeah. their work to the public because that would be more people than necessary. So just like you have some people who are better at speaking in public than others, okay. um, you need to have a number of scientists who can communicate with the public oh, yes. and also who the public trust. Okay. And it is an important thing that certainly in the UK and I think across the world that the public trust scientists much more than they trust politicians You're right. or Definitely. journalists. Definitely. Um, the difficulty is that in general politicians are very good at interacting with people right. which is why they become yes. politicians. Scientists sometimes are a bit shy and right. they spend their time in the laboratory and they don't like but I, I, I don't think I don't think so it is right for your case no. I think you are also renowned as the science communicator so how actually your career as the well-known scientist and also at the same time as a science communicator really successfully how it begins well um, I think that chemists are lucky compared to some areas of science right that there are lots of nice things to show the public reactions with explosions and things which people like to see and um, I have been since I was quite um, started science I have been giving lectures mm. to people and um, the first time was when my sister is nine years younger than me oh. so I was already <coughs> working at the university while she was still at school oh, right. so she asked me to give a lecture and this is right. perhaps how I started right. and Nottingham has a big tradition of demonstration lectures of people mm. um, talking about chemistry to the public right. but what really um, launched me was the fact that I started working with a video journalist for making oh videos for YouTube right. so that nearly every day I lecture to more people on YouTube than I would lecture in a whole year as a okay. chemistry professor. <laughs> okay, so do you think it is the recipe that you are successfully as the science communicator or um, you have any other, uh, you know, strategic way or you know, secret way. Well, I, I, I science think, communicator. Well, I don't think like everything else. Right. Uh, there aren't any in life. There aren't um, special secrets. I mean, because if somebody asks you what is the secret of being a politician, right? This is not an easy question to answer. I think what has changed in the UK and I think it's changing across the world yes. is that for a long time it was felt that um, it was not very good for scientists to um, to talk about their work to the public this was self-advertising right and what they really want to do that scientists should be judged for the quality of their research the number of articles they publish and so on right. I think now we're getting to the situation where science is communication is becoming very much more important right okay I think uh, because of the time yeah thank you very much Prof Martin but before that I think it is clear yeah. that actually the scientist has responsibility to communicate the science and also you know the finding and new thing also the homework of the human being uh, in the future 
Yeah. So I think uh, what you already done is really uh, you know beneficial, and I hope that many uh, communities audiences also can follow, uh, especially the scholars and the scientists. What you have already done, yeah. I think. Thank you very much thank for you. your thank uh, you very time much. and you know very genuine and very nice explanation. Thank, thank you. you. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is very important for us that Professor Martin already well known as not only scientist in chemistry, but also as the shine communicators, where now the life is uh, changing. So the task of the scientist is not only doing the new thing and searching new thing, but the development of science will affect the human being. So therefore, it is responsibility also for scientists to communicate to the public and it is really important to shaping the world which we hope that better uh, world in the future. I think that's all and thank you very much.